Microsoft is scanning the inside of password-protected zip files for malware. This is an interesting article. I cannot wait to get both of you your takes on this. But ultimately, what's going on here is that Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, breaking it down for you good folks out there, they thought, you know what bad actors do? They like to take that malware that they've painstakingly worked on, and they like to bypass security mechanisms by stuffing it inside of a password-protected zip file. Microsoft said, oh, hell no. We won't be having this. We'll just open these password-protected zip files. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> and we'll scan for whether like or not there's any, any kind of bad things going on there for the greater good, right, as they do. So you might be asking yourself, how do they do this? How do they open these passwords? So they brute force the password <laughs> to see if there's any, you know, to, there you go. So you might be going, well, obviously, Daniel, they're, they're doing that. To, they're trying to do a good thing out there. They're stopping malware from propagating X, Y, and Z. And if they've got to, you know, subvert your security to do that, then what's a, what's a little security subversion between friends? Boys, what say ye? Uh, it's just a violation of privacy. I mean, what, what the, <laughs> let's, let's face just, it. Ding, right? ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if they can open up, you know, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. We're just searching for, for malware. All your other stuff, like personal information that you might have in there, we're not going to look at that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Are we really not going to look at that? I, That's the thing. What about all those files that were legit that they just hacked? That's a, that's a very good uh, a good <laughs> point there. So what was funny to me about this, so this was discovered by a, a security researcher yeah. who does malware analysis, yeah. right? And he will take... Something you can identify with. I totally identify You've with this. You've had to jump through I've all these hoops yourself. Done right? this from time to time. Yep. So what's interesting is like, you'll take those malware samples and you'll want to hand them off to your friends that also do malware analysis that are probably better at X, Y, or Z. You know, so, hey, yeah. look at this malware Zip sample. Up, I'm going to yeah. send this over to you. Obviously, it's going to get busted if I try to send it through a regular email because it's going to flag it as malicious. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's cool. Let me just stick it in a zip file and send it to you. And he noticed that those were no longer making it. They were getting <laughs> quarantined, Stopped. Yeah. right? And not only that, but his OneDrive. Yeah. Was, so he was, he was keeping all his malware in one specific folder, which was synced with OneDrive, and that, all that gone. Every one of his samples had been deleted by Microsoft going, hey, these are bad. And he's like, well, well no crap, they're bad. I I, flat, I made yeah. an excluded yeah. Yeah. area, and now you're still doing this. I'm trying to exclude these things from you doing it because I'm, I'm running, you know, testing and, and whatnot on that. So now it's like back to the drawing board on, on how we share this. Not that that's like too difficult to do. There right. are mechanisms to do that. But, you know, I, I don't think that honestly, as I read the comments, people were like, you shouldn't be sending malicious things. We should have mechanisms that stop malicious stuff. I'm like, I, I totally get it, but that, that's not the purpose of this article. Yeah. The main point of the article is, is should Microsoft be just taking it upon themselves to say, I am going to break your security to make sure you are secure? Yeah, and I, I agree. I, I think that that's probably where the, the sticking point has to be. But yeah. it's the same thing that we all do, though, right? Do we actually read every letter of the end user licensing agreement? We and, do not. And then finally, they're like, "Well, you actually did agree to it." And Dan's like, "The hell I did." Uh, and then they zoom in on that paragraph that you can't see. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, I, I did. I did actually click on that thing. <laughs> well, obviously, the, and, and those right. those licenses change. Those right. those agreements right. change, and you get an email. Right. Hey, we've updated our end user license agreement. Yeah. Yeah. You by just not. Canceling your subscription yeah, means that you agree yeah, to it. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is unprecedented, too. I mean, we've all been doing this for a long time, right? Yeah. Have you ever, uh, do you ever recall any big vendor like this brute force attacking it's, your password? It's so crazy to me because here's the thing how much easier would it have been for them just to go, hey, we noticed you have a password protected file that's as an attachment in an email. Um, we would like to check that. Is that okay with you? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can that, it would have been that zip zip simple. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Which is a question you get on their standard antivirus. Right. Yeah. You want me to check zips, but right. then, you, of course. You would think that it'd be easy enough for them to just say, we're going to quarantine this and allow you to kind of right. say whether or not to allow that through. But I guess they were also faced, if I remember correctly, they were also facing the fact that 
people were able to pass malware using that same technique. Yes, it, it is area. absolutely right. So this is a, a tale as old as time, right? That we set up security mechanisms right. and malicious actors find a way around it, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And so their, their justification for doing this is the fact that, well, we're not, doing, we're not trying to do you any harm. We're trying to actually be helpful. I, you know, I don't know about y'all. I have read a history book or two, yeah. <laughs> right? And the good news is everybody can sleep tight. The government and large entities that have for power and control, they never <laughs> abuse any You'll kind of information. Right. Like, I, I know that when they just start coming inside of my house in the middle of the night and go, I go, what are you doing here? They go, well, we're checking for, you know, uh, people that are hiding from the law. What? Well, I don't have any people hiding from the I know, but people hide in houses. <laughs> and this is a house. So we're going to check it. Yeah. It's for thing, your good. It's the other for safety. The funny thing about it, Daniel, too, I just remembered thinking when I read the article, um, the reason they did it was because they could. The, yeah. the encryption yes. was so weak, right? Because yeah. the article yeah. ends with, by the way, if you want to go AES right. on your zips, and then it told you how to do that, which they wouldn't be able well, to do. Yeah, which is not difficult. And, right. and uh, again... So uh, to me, this is like, yeah, you'll you'll stop it for like a second, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So this is effective for like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then the, uh, the threat out. actor goes, "Oh yeah, well I'll just AES encrypt a seven zip file." Yep. Bada bing, we're back in action. Or honestly, from what I read, the system that they're using to brute force is because a lot of people will say, "I have password protected this zip file that I'm sending you." The password is, you know, infected or yeah. who got you or password one or whatever. And, you know, it's just a simple mm-hmm. grep, right. find and use every single word and phrase inside of your email to try to use as a, as a password. So that, that was one thing they were doing. So it's, it's simple things like that, that. They just won't add to the email. Or if I am a malware an, uh, analyst and I'm sending these kind of things, I want to get it across. I will stop putting that in a way that is easily discerned. Yeah. By thing, honestly, just we'll stop using email. Yeah, right. I'll I'll set up like a an FTP site or whatever, and I'll yep. let you transfer these things. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you, when you read the article, the the guy that I think lost all his work kind yeah. of emailed Microsoft and said, "Hey guys, what what the hell are you doing?" And never got an answer back. <clears throat> and you would think that the idea of just sending like a reply, oh here's what we're doing, but they never did. They just didn't reply back. Which lets you know that oh we, we didn't want people to to know that this was yeah. happening. Yeah. It's a little hush hush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they, they admitted that they got the email, but they also they just said oh yeah okay we, we got the email. Yeah. And <laughs> there's there's supposed what, to be a second part. What do what do you say to that there, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we got the email. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a good email. I liked it. <laughs> Formatted well. Yeah. I mean, didn't have any malware in it either. <laughs> Trust me, we checked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, but but that kind of activity, right? That's what makes people even more suspicious. And then it, when they want to talk about people wanting to move off the platform and, you know, people not trust, like in a work environment, why don't you want to put your stuff up in OneDrive? You know, <laughs> yeah, why don't I? Yeah. Great question. Uh, here's the thing. Cause now I, well, I mean, it's the whole reason I don't have a uh, line of business apps on my phone. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because at that point that I say, yes, I'm going to engage with my work via my phone as some sort of BYOD kind of thing going on, Mm -hmm. I have now given you, I've delegated some sort of control and role over my technology, my information, my control. I I have to now follow the rules you want to follow. Maybe my rules are tighter than your rules, Mm -hmm. which they they probably are. Uh, You know, uh, (laughs) that's, that's the whole thing is... We do work stuff on work platforms, do personal stuff on personal platform. But, Daniel, that makes it more difficult. Yeah. For everyone. Yeah. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm with you. Completely agree. If you want me to work on a phone, provide me the phone. Correct. You said work with. That's it. And if you want to take the camera off that phone or make it so that it uh, times out after 30 seconds of inactivity, Get it's their out. phone. Yeah. Yep. You'll never hear me complain one time about you doing things to your stuff. Yep. Because it ain't mine. Yep. And I don't care. That is absolutely true. Closing thoughts on this one, uh, gentlemen? Yeah. I don't think they'll do it again. Microsoft will stop hacking passwords. You watch. Yeah. Or they'll probably implement some form of... 
I, and I think they did. I love, I love your idea. Though. I think that they have said, hey, yeah. like there's a prompt now that yeah. says yeah. we are doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's like a um, an optional thing or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah, just let me opt yeah. in the security. Hey, it's a great way to inform the end user like this is it. The reason we're doing this is because it's a security avenue. Yeah. Like we, we, we yep. have to be on the lookout for these things. So be wary that these attachments that come in zip formats is a common attack vector. So be careful. Yep.